brave men and women gave all so that our flag can fly high and proud. This monument to Virginia's fallen from battles throughout our nation's history is a living tribute to freedom and the sacrifices it requires. Join us as we remember these heroes through a special Memorial Day ceremony. Live on the grounds of the Virginia War Memorial. Now, we welcome a word from the Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Good morning. I'm Governor Glenn Youngkin. I'm honored to have my first opportunity as the Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia to pay tribute to the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice to defend our nation this Memorial Day. Before I continue, I want to extend a warm welcome to all Gold Star family members joining us today here in Richmond and across the Commonwealth. It is so important to acknowledge the sacrifices and pain that the families and friends of lost service members have had to endure. Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, sons, daughters, friends. Every year, families of the fallen are joined together and bound by loss in a way most of us can't even imagine. Part of our duty to honor those who died in service to our country is to reach out to their family and friends. Today marks the 66th consecutive Memorial Day ceremony held at the Virginia War Memorial. And the third year we've offered this ceremony virtually to viewers across the Commonwealth. We are so grateful that we can share this ceremony with the Commonwealth and we are united in our hearts in remembering our fallen. The mission of the Virginia War Memorial is to honor our veterans, preserve our history, educate our youth, and inspire patriotism in all. As evidenced by today's ceremony, the Virginia War Memorial and its partners remain committed to doing just that. We are committed to paying forward the stories of the heroes enshrined within our memorial to ensure they and their sacrifices are never forgotten. Nearly 12,000 Virginia heroes killed in action from World War II to the present are etched in stone and glass on the walls of the Shrine of Memory. Though they have been taken from us, their memory shall live forever on these walls. As we honor all of the service members who are enshrined here, I want to share that in the past year, Virginia has been blessed in two ways. First, we have not added any new names of service members killed in action to the Shrine. And second, we were able to identify two missing in action soldiers whose names were included in our shrine, yet their remains had never been identified. These two heroes are Army Corporal Roy H. Thomas of St. Charles. Corporal Thomas was a member of Company M, 3rd Battalion, 31st Infantry Regiment, 7th Infantry Division. He was reported missing in action in December 1950 after his unit was attacked by enemy forces in North Korea. An Army Air Force Private First Class Edward H. Benson Jr., 22 years old of Roanoke. In March 1945, Private First Class Benson was assigned to the 1562nd Army Air Force Base Unit on Biak Island, part of the modern day Republic of Indonesia. He and 39 other service members were killed during a Japanese air raid on the Cerrito Airstrip on March 22nd. Of those 40, three, including Benson, could not be accounted for after the attack. To the families of Corporal Thomas and Private First Class Benson, although more than 70 years is too long to wait, we share in your gratitude for knowing your loved ones are now at rest, at home where they belong in Virginia. And to all of our Gold Star families, we grieve with you for the loss of your loved ones. As a nation, we designate the last Monday of May every year as Memorial Day. But on the hallowed grounds of the Virginia War Memorial, every day is Memorial Day. In every one of our nation's wars, Virginians have been among the first to answer the call. Freedom is never free. And on Memorial Day, we are all reminded of the human cost to protect our freedoms. 
The Virginia War Memorial is our memorial. It exists because of the support of veterans service organizations, the Virginia General Assembly, the Virginia War Memorial Foundation, and its donors and supporters, and of course, so many civic groups. But most of all, it exists because of you, the citizens of our great commonwealth. You know that the costs of freedom are extremely high and that we must all never forget. We must never forget those who paid that price to defend the blessings of liberty that we hold so dear. As we pay tribute to our fallen heroes in today's ceremony, I ask that you remember their courage, their devotion, and above all, their sacrifice. And live in gratitude each and every day for the precious gifts that they have given us. I ask that you remember the families that they left behind. I ask that from our heroes, you draw the knowledge that when brave men and women are needed to defend our freedom, Virginians will always be first in line. God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome to the 2022 Commonwealth Memorial Day celebration here at the Virginia War Memorial. My name is Clay Mountcastle. I'm the director of the Virginia War Memorial and we are very pleased that you're going to join us on this very special day either in person here at the War Memorial or via live broadcast. A very special welcome this morning to the members of our military, both past and present, our Gold Star family members, our Blue Star family members, and members and guests joining us at your war memorial, the best of its kind in the country. Thank you. To all of our elected officials, our distinguished guests, it's an honor to have you here with us. It's an honor to be joined by our Lieutenant Governor. as well as Deputy Secretary Pack, Generals Williams and Simile, to hear their thoughts on today's importance. At this point in our ceremonies, I often offer a reminder about why today is so special for our state and for our country, kind of a true significance of Memorial Day. This year, I'd simply like to express my gratitude. I'm grateful for this nation and for our armed forces, the very best in the world. I'm grateful that we get to enjoy the freedoms provided by those who have died in service to this country. I'm grateful to live in Virginia, which places a premium on the idea of honoring our fallen and remembering their sacrifice. I'm grateful that we have this beautiful memorial to bring us together in memory and in pride. I'm grateful for all of you for sharing this very special day with us on this chilly, brisk morning. We are all so very fortunate, and we're fortunate because they gave all for us. Please stand for the presentation of the colors, followed by an opening prayer, Pledge of Allegiance, and our national anthem. We do have a flag posted up there at the top, so people don't have to turn around. They can look towards the flag. We'll now receive an opening prayer by Chaplain Johnson. Good morning, let us pray. 
Eternal Father and everlasting God, we thank you for your presence with all gathered here today and online, trusting that your presence will bring comfort to those who mourn, and especially to our Gold Star families today and always, and that you would bring comfort as well to all battle buddies and all close friends and relatives as we pause today to honor and remember these heroic Virginians who are fallen in service to this great commonwealth and nation. Grant sustaining power today as we strive to give homage to these who are enshrined in our Commonwealth's collective memory in this hallowed place on this solemn occasion. Lord, strengthen us to resolve to remember again today the terrible price that is exacted on every generation which manifests in the loss of our sons and daughters who have died on the battlefields of this world in service to our Commonwealth and nation. Regardless of the era in which they lived or the name of the conflict in which they fought, their sacrifice transcends time by continually leading us to that great and terrible truth, that greater love has no man than this, than one lay down their life for their friends. For we know that Virginia has paid a high price for the continuance of freedom. For these men and women whose names are inscribed on these walls went away to war, still wanting to live but in the fulfillment of their duty and in their dedicated and selfless service paid the incalculable cost for our freedom in the giving of their very lives. Of this act of giving, the instructive truth that freedom isn't free is never more obvious than when the true meaning of Memorial Day is remembered by us all today. So today, this Memorial Day, we gather together to keep alive the memories of these Virginians that sacrificed their lives as well as all other members of our armed services who gave their lives so that we could live on in our freedom. In this ceremony, may we honor them, Lord, and remember them with grateful hearts, owing them a debt we can never repay. In Christ's name, amen. Specialist Adam Marcus of the Virginia Army National Guard will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our national anthem will now be performed by Senior Master Sergeant Roberto Mercado of the Air National Guard. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave.
Please be seated. We are truly fortunate today to be joined by senior leaders from our armed forces. We'll first hear from the Commanding General of the U.S. Army's Combined Armed Support Command and the Sustainment Center of Excellence at Fort Lee, Virginia. Please welcome Major General Mark Simmerly. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Lieutenant Governor Sears, Dep Deputy Secretary Pock, Major General Williams, and Director Mountcastle, thank you uh, for the chance to be here today. And thanks for everyone uh, for joining us in this wonderful place. I'm grateful to Dr. Clay Mountcastle for the invitation to participate in today's ceremony and to be in this remarkable site, dedicated to honoring our fallen service members. Memorial Day, is a day of national awareness and a solemn reverence, a day for us to honor the American military men and women who gave their lives in defense of our nation, its values, and our freedom. Memorial Day provides us with the opportunity to reflect on our brave Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our great nation. Memorial Day was first observed after the Civil War and was called Decoration Day because families typically remembered their loved ones by decorating grave sites with flowers and flags. We still do that today across America. In fact, uh, the soldiers from the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, place small flags at every grave site in Arlington National Cemetery. In proclaiming that first decoration day in 1868, General John Logan, the National Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, wrote, that we should not only remember those who died in defense of their country, but also to renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us, the widows and the orphans. Today, we continue to honor those left behind, those who paid a very personal price for us and our nation, our Gold Star families. Allow me to express my solemn gratitude to you on behalf of all those present today. We're humbled by your sacrifice inspired by your resilience, and grateful for your continued service to your nation and our communities. This year, as we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, we remember those who fought in the challenging conditions of Southeast Asia. Over two million Americans served in uniform in Vietnam and Southeast Asia, including my father and my father-in-law. In that fight, we lost over 58,000 American sons and daughters as casualties. So many served with distinction. 240 service members were awarded the Medal of Honor for their heroism when the odds were stacked against them. Eight of them were born in the Commonwealth of Virginia, including Michael Foland, Wesley Fox, William Jones III, Howard Lee, Gary Miller, Charles Morris, Rupert Sargent, and Rocky Versace. There are countless examples of men and women who exhibited the core Army values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. These values continue to serve as a guide for our armed services today. And our diversity provide a sense of common unity. Today we honor those who lost our lives in that war. We honor those who've passed away in the years since. Ever since eight members of the Lexington Militia lost their lives in the first battle of the American Revolution, nearly 1.2 million service members, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen, have made the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of this great nation. We're reminded that the world remains a very dangerous place and that our soldiers are in harm's way all across the globe. In the Army, we consider our greatest asset to be our people. Our all-volunteer Army and our all-volunteer service is a great credit to Americans of all races, genders, and creeds. And our common commitment to defense and love of country binds us together and unifies us. This Memorial Day, I know that we all remember the generations that have gone before us and those who have selflessly served this country and paid the ultimate price. If you know a gold star or surviving family, I ask that you tell them that you remember their soldier, their sailor, their airman or marine, and are grateful for the service they gave to our country. Memorial Day is a time to honor our commitment to never forget those who served and sacrificed for America. 
and today we do that once again. Thank you for remembering our fellow soldiers and their selfless service. We'll next have remarks from Virginia's Adjutant General and longtime friend and supporter of the Virginia War Memorial, Major General Timothy P. Williams. Well, good morning. It's certainly my honor to be here representing the more than 9,200 soldiers, airmen, Virginia Defense Force personnel, and state and federal civilians who make up the Virginia National Guard and the Virginia Department of Military Affairs. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, Deputy Secretary, General Simmerly, all distinguished visitors, guests, it's wonderful to be here today. And frankly, it's like a reunion every time we come here. And this day is the most important of reunions. First off, I want to thank Chaplain Johnson for the invocation, Specialist Marcus for leading us in the pledge, Senior Master Sergeant Mikado, for singing the national anthem, and our Virginia Defense Force personnel providing traffic assistance today. And while they are not here with us today, I'd like to do a shout out to the soldiers of the 29th Infantry Division Band who are supporting ceremonies at Virginia cemeteries in Dublin and Amelia, as well as programs in Martinsville and Norfolk. It's a true, yes. And it's a true joint effort, and I'm proud of everything that they're doing to help us remember our fallen comrades. We just can't say thank you enough, though, to the folks and the staff that are here at the Virginia War Memorial, as well as the team at the Virginia Department of Veterans Services for everything that they do to support our armed forces and their families. Memorial Day offers us a purposeful opportunity to express our gratitude and remember the dedication and courage of those men and women who paid the ultimate price in service to our country, defending the ideals of freedom. As we remember those we have lost, we can honor their memory and pay tribute to their sacrifice by reaffirming our commitment to selfless service to both Commonwealth and country. It's great to gather in person once again, and as we remember our fellow Virginians whose names are etched on the original shrine of memory, honoring those who died during World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the Persian Gulf War, as well as in the new shrine of memory for the global war on terrorism and beyond, which includes 10 Virginia National Guard soldiers we have lost to enemy action since 9-11. It's also appropriate to remember the men and women who died in the line of duty on state or federal orders under Title 32 of the United States Code, whose names are on the Commonwealth's Public Safety Memorial. 32 Virginia National Guard soldiers and airmen are remembered among the nearly 900 Virginia public safety officers at the memorial site at the Capitol Square in Richmond. And in just a few days, we will pay tribute to our D-Day heroes at the National D-Day Memorial in Bedford on June 6th. More than 800 members of the 116th Infantry Regiment, 29th Infantry Division were killed, wounded, or missing during the assault on Omaha Beach on June 6th. But their courage and bravery helped create a foothold that allowed follow-on forces to continue the assault and set the stage for Allied victory in Europe. The employment of the Virginia National Guard over the last two years has been unprecedented, and the holiday weekend is a wonderful opportunity to rest and reflect with loved ones. But please remember, not everyone is with their families all across the globe. Our soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen continue to do the hard work of keeping us safe. We recently welcomed home the soldiers of the 29th Infantry Division from their federal active duty deployment to Kuwait. When they were mobilized, we had 2,000 Virginia National Guard troops deployed overseas, and that was the most since the Iraq surge of 2007. When you include the 29th ID soldiers from Kentucky and Maryland, it was the most divisional troops deployed since World War II. And we still have our soldiers providing air defense site security in Iraq, a security force in the Horn of Africa, and a brigade headquarters conducting peace support operations in Kosovo. 
Please keep them and all the other members of the armed forces in your prayers, and we certainly look forward to seeing them soon when they return home. This year, more than ever, we owe a special thanks to our families, our employers, and everyone for their essential support to the Virginia National Guard and the Virginia Defense Force. Without them, we couldn't do the things we've, asked, we've been asked to do. And finally, thank you to the Virginia War Memorial for their great work in putting to get together today's ceremony and inviting us to join them on this important day. And thanks to all of you here today helping us remember those who never returned from war and their loved ones returned from, uh, who sacrificed daily without them. There are so many familiar faces that are here making it feel as I said at the beginning, much like a reunion, but with an important element. A rededication to our important task of remembering and telling the story of our heroes. We must never forget their sacrifice and how their courage and dedication contribute to our nation, our republic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Well done. I was fortunate recently to conduct a history interview with our Deputy Secretary of Veterans and Defense Affairs, Jason Pack, about his service in the U.S. Army. He talked in great detail about those with which he had served, his fellow soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice. Without question, he truly understands the meaning of today. Here to introduce our keynote speaker is the Honorable Jason Pack. All righty, good morning. I'm honored and humbled uh, to be here with all of you and truly appreciate General Simile, General Williams, your remarks uh, on this Memorial Day. I want to thank the entire staff, first of all, of the Virginia War Memorial uh, and its executive director, Dr. Clay Mountcastle, uh, for continuing to carry on the legacy of Virginia's best throughout history and into the future. If you haven't done so already, I'd urge you to walk the exhibits of the museum and spend time learning the stories of past heroes and Virginians from every single conflict in our nation's history. Today, thousands gather around cemeteries, monuments, museums, parks, all over the Commonwealth and all over the country. We march in parades, we watch televised Memorial Day concerts, in person and on TV. We do this in honor of the loyalty and bravery of the fallen and recognize the strength, perseverance, and resilience of the families. I'll share Memorial Day for me is a day where I reflect upon the importance of sharing the life stories of how our great service members lived and not how they passed. To the Gold Star families in the audience and every family that has lost a loved one in service to our country, Memorial Day is not just one day, but it's every day. I and our Secretary of Veterans and Defense Affairs have an important mission and commitment to our fellow soldiers, sailors, Marines, Guardsmen, Coast Guardsmen, Reservists, to never forget and always strive to be the best that we can be in our actions and deeds to honor those that fought, bled, and sacrificed. I, like many of you that are here today, served alongside many of these amazing individuals. We've lost soldiers in combat. We've mourned our best friends. We've lost soldiers to suicide. Part of our duty to honor those who died in service to our country is to engage their family and friends and carry on their legacy. Go out and volunteer. Serve your community. Do something for the greater good and strive to emulate the service and love for the country like the great heroes that came before us. For me, one of those heroes is Captain Andrew Patrick Ross. He was my best friend, my West Point classmate, soccer teammate, Virginia native. He is honored here in this war memorial. And he most importantly, he was just a genuinely good human being. I just want to say thanks, Drew. I know he's watching over us, him as well as thousands of other Virginians, as well as hundreds of thousands of other Americans. So thank you again to everyone who is here in attendance and those viewing virtually. Let's keep paying forward the stories of our heroes and ensure their families and their sacrifices are never forgotten. I'd like, now, I'd like to now take this opportunity to introduce our keynote speaker, a remarkable leader, an individual who truly does not need a formal introduction, an immigrant from Jamaica who is a proud Marine that knows what it means to serve. 
a former member of the Virginia House of Delegates, and among an even longer list of accomplishments, a wife and mother of two young daughters, who I understand that are here, Katya and Janelle, our 42nd Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears. Oh, please don't get up. It's, it's hot enough already. Your being here really is a testament that you care, that you know, yes, we're baking in the sun, but we need to honor those who deserve honor. So thank you for coming. In fact, the people that we are here to honor, to remember, they don't sit among us. If we are to see them, then we must visit their graves, whether here or in some other country. And some, their whereabouts are unknown to us, known only to God. The men and women that we celebrate, we celebrate them, they died in service to our great country. So, let me be clear, this is not a three-day weekend. This is Memorial Day. It is an honorable day. Yes. We thank our fallen soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guard for giving the ultimate sacrifice. You know, Holocaust survivor Elie Wiesel said, Without memory, there is no culture. Without memory, there would be no future, no civilization. Our men and women gave their service to their country, their lives. We thank their families for giving them to us. You heard that dreaded knock. You saw those men and women fully dressed, beautifully dressed at your door informing you in somber tones that your life was changed forever, that your loved one had given his or her life in defense of our great country. And you realized that you would not be able to kiss them one more time, not be able to see that smile, not be able to play ball. The baby would not know his, her, father, daughter, all of these had changed forever. And all too soon, we will be adding yet another group of patriots. These will be called the Guardians, our newest military branch, the United States Space Force. Just wanted to honor some of our distinctive men and women. We honor heroes such as Captain Lloyd Williams of the 5th United States Marine Regiment. He died in that famous Battle of Bella Wood, June 1918, when the French ordered Captain Lloyd and his men to retreat. Captain Lloyd shouted, retreat hell, we just got here. He died of gas and shrapnel. Captain Lloyd was a Virginia boy, born in Clark County. And then we have General Douglas MacArthur. He said, whoever said the pen is mightier than the sword obviously never encountered automatic weapons. He was born in Arkansas, but that's the other Virginia. There is no honor in sending men to die for something you won't even fight for yourself, and that was said by Navy SEAL Mark Owen on his, seams, his SEAL team's mission to kill Osama bin Laden. Don't know where he was born, so we'll just claim him as a Virginian too. And here is General Chuck Yeager. All that I am, I owe to the Air Force. He was born in West Virginia, which as you know, really is Virginia too. And then we have our Coast, Coast Guardsmen, and one of our heroes said this, what gets the job done is blood, sweat, 
and curse words. But he said, to be very serious, they also have another saying, and it's this, if you haven't faced the storm, you haven't faced yourself. And I want to talk about what it means from the perspective of a family member, a child whose father, thankfully, came back from Vietnam. Her name, Rochelle Goodrich. This is what she said. Have you ever stopped to ponder the amount of blood spilled, the volume of tears shed, the degree of pain and anguish endured, the number of noble men and women lost in battle so that we, as individuals, might have a say in governing our country. So, honor the lives sacrificed for your freedoms, and that is what we do on this last Monday of the month of May, designated as Memorial Day. We honor these men and women who have given themselves. They raised their right hand and swore to support and defend and protect the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. They knew that one day they may very well be called upon to die in a fight for their country. General Colin Powell said this, all that we've ever asked when we helped other countries over the years, when we sent men and women to great prero to fight for their freedom, we only ever asked for the amount of land to bury them. We never asked anything else. And speaking of General Powell, we are reminded of the Buffalo Soldiers and their freedom fight. We're reminded that before the Buffalo Soldiers even, we had women who served in the Continental Army. One such woman was Anna Marie Lane. She dressed for war and apologized to her husband after he was severely wounded. She said, she just wanted to serve. We are reminded, after all, that America, just like our own lives, may not be what she is supposed to be, but she is not what she used to be. She strives to be better and better, and through fits and starts, she's getting there. She will be that city on a shining hill, and when America is troubled, when she is threatened, with extermination, when she is threatened to be wiped off the face of the earth, she rallies her sons and daughters and others who came to her shores, who have tasted liberty and have sworn allegiance to America. She rallies them and they protect and defend her and the Constitution from all comers, knowing that they may be giving up their lives. And so, we join others who have gone long before, and we say, as Captain John Paul Jones said in 1779, I have not yet begun to fight because you've heard it already, freedom is not free. And therefore, we will continue to fight for right, and we will do that until as the biblical book, Joel, Joel 3.10 tells us that we will continue when men learn to study war no more. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Each Memorial Day, we make a special note of the sacrifice of those Virginians whose names have been added to the Virginia War Memorial in the past year. Fortunately, no names were added to our shrine of memory this past year. However, <laughs> however, 
However, we were able to add a gold star next to two Virginians previously listed as missing in action whose remains were fully recovered and identified this past year. We will ring the memorial bell in honor of each of them. Army Air Force's Private First Class Edward H. Benson of Roanoke. In March 1945, Private First Class Benson was killed during a Japanese air raid on the Cerrito Airstrip in modern-day Indonesia on March 22nd. And Army Corporal Roy H. Thomas of St. Charles. Corporal Thomas was a member of the 3rd Battalion, 31st Infantry Regiment of the 7th Infantry Division. He was reported missing in action in December 1950 after his unit was attacked by enemy forces in North Korea. Thank you. Education is the cornerstone of the War Memorial's mission. I'd like to recognize two special people in the audience today. Every year, the Virginia War Memorial Foundation presents the Rear Admiral John Meraki Memorial Scholarship to graduating high school seniors planning to enroll in ROTC programs in colleges here in Virginia. I'm very pleased to announce the winners of this year's Meraki Scholarship. First winner is Alex Brandon from Charlottesville High School. There's Alex. Alex plans to enroll in Army ROTC at Virginia Tech. <laughs> Our other winner is Danielle Cruzy from Hermitage High School. Danielle, here's Danielle. Danielle will be enrolling in Air Force ROTC at Liberty University. Every year we have an Armed Forces Day art contest that we recently had that allows students from around Virginia to submit artwork that speaks to them as far as armed, the Armed Forces. This year's theme was Bravery and Courage. I'll announce our winners. They aren't with us today because we just decided the winners uh, late last week. But our uh, winner for the kindergarten through second grade level uh, was Joseph C. of Fluvanna County. So good job, Joseph. Our third and fifth grade winner uh, was Fallon F. of fourth grade from Henrico County. Thank you, Fallon. Our sixth and eighth grade group winner uh, was Conrad A. of the seventh grade here in Chesterfield County. Here in Chesterfield. And our winner for the high school division uh, with a piece called Iwo Jima was Ethan V. of in the ninth grade from Henrico County. Great job to our winners, and we thank all of the students that submitted for that. Now we're we'll going to do something special. Uh, in a minute, the Navy uh, Fleet Forces Band will perform the service medley. Normally, you know, on Veterans Day, veterans stand when they hear their service medley played. Um, what I would ask veterans in the audience to do today, when you hear your service song played in the medley, please stand, but you're not standing uh, for yourself. You're standing for those that gave all, that gave the ultimate sacrifice. You're standing for them to be recognized. So please, uh, stand when you hear your service uh, song played. And with that, the Navy Fleet Forces Band.
Thank you for watching the Commonwealth's Memorial Day Ceremony, live from the Virginia War Memorial. For additional information about the Virginia War Memorial and the Virginia Department of Veterans Services, please visit dvs.virginia.gov.